So the third and final type of pericyclic reaction we're going to look at are what are called, again, sigmatropic rearrangements. And you're always breaking a sigma bond and forming a new sigma bond at the same time. Uh, and it also involves the cyclic movement of pi electrons and stuff like this. And kind of look at what's going on in this reaction right here. We're forming a new bond right here. And then we're breaking this one right here, getting the cyclic movement of electrons. That way, every atom in that six-membered ring is both gaining a bond and losing a bond, and nobody's going to break the octet rule. Now, we got a special numerical notation that describes these sigmatropic rearrangements. And if you kind of look, we're forming a new sigma bond right there. We are breaking a sigma bond right there. So, and if you look where we're forming one and breaking one, they're the same atom right there. So we'll say that they're one apart. One and the same means they're the same, they're one. So, but the others here go around the horn. It doesn't really matter which side you look. One, two, three, four, five. So on the other side of where you're forming and breaking, it takes five atoms to get there, including the ones that are involved. So we'll end up calling this a one five sigma tropic rearrangement then. So you're counting the number of atoms uh, on both sides of where you form and break the bond. Now, it's a little bit funky on this one because, you know, the same atoms involved both in forming and breaking, and that's where that one comes from. It'll be a little easier to decipher where that numerical system comes on the next example. So probably the most common sigmatropic rearrangement is the one we'll study here, and it's called the Cope rearrangement. So in the Cope rearrangement is a 3-3 sigmatropic rearrangement, and it involves all six atoms in the cyclic transition state are going to be carbons. We'll find out there's a Claisen rearrangement as well. It's also a 3-3 sigmatropic rearrangement, uh, but we'll find out one of the atoms in the ring will end up being an oxygen. Well, in this case, they're all carbons, and that's what makes it a Cope rearrangement. If we kind of follow the cyclic movement of electrons here, we're going to form a new sigma bond right here. So, and again, cyclic movement of electrons, everybody gains and loses a bond. There's the new bond we are forming. There's the old one we're breaking. So the old one we're breaking is between these carbons. The new one that we're forming is between these carbons. And if we count on this side, one, two, three, from where we're forming to where we're breaking is three atoms. And on this side, one, two, three, from where we're forming to where we're breaking, three atoms, that's what makes it a 3-3 three, three sigmatropic rearrangement. So, and usually uh, it's just pure alkene stability that, you know, drives the equilibrium in this case. So if we look at our alkenes here, this one here is just mono substituted alkene. This one's also just a mono substituted alkene, but on this side, this one's di, and this one's di, and the more substituted alkenes are more stable, and that's why the equilibrium here is definitely shifted to the right, and I'll favor formation of the products in this case. So now we'll deal with the Claisen rearrangement. And the Claisen rearrangement, as we said earlier, is also a 3 3 sigmatropic rearrangement, just like the COPE was. Uh, but the big difference here is you're going to have an oxygen being one of them. And generally, you're going to have like a vinyl allyl system here. So notice uh, ether, I should say specifically. So, and in this case, your vinyl allyl ether definitely. Uh, subject to the Claisen rearrangement. It's just a thermal condition reaction here. And we're going to do a cyclic movement of electrons again. So maybe I will form a bond right here, break this one and form a bond right here, and then form a new sigma bond right here. So I'm forming a new sigma bond right there in this position. I am breaking one right over here in this position. And one, two, three, one, two, three. Hence, it's a three, three sigmatropic rearrangement. So, and in this case, we're going to end up with a double bond auction here and an alkene here. And a carbon auction double bond is more stable than a carbon carbon double bond. If you recall, that's why uh, in keto enol tautomerization, usually the keto form is favored just because the electrons are lower energy in a carbon auction double bond than in a carbon carbon double bond. Um, so, that's usually what's governing the equilibrium here is just favoring formation of that carbon auction double bond. Uh, and again, how to recognize this, you've got a vinyl allyl ether. That's how you know. If it's not arranged for you, looking like it's almost forming a six-membered ring, then you should really redraw it till it looks like it is. It'll be much easier to look at the, uh, the arrow pushing and predict what your product's going to look like. And we do have to look at one special case for the Claisen rearrangement, and that is instead of having an allylic vinyl ether, you have an allylic phenyl ether, so a benzene ring here. So here's the phenyl part. Here's the allylic part. So, and in this case, your rearrangement's going to be just a little bit funky. But if we again look at the same cyclic movement of electrons here, so I'll move these here. I'll move these here. That's where I'm breaking a sigma bond. So, 
and then we'll move these out here and that's where I'm forming a sigma bond so where I'm forming and breaking one two three and on this side one two three and again that's what makes it a three three sigma tropic rearrangement just like all the Claisons uh, but some things are gonna be a little bit funky here and again the equilibrium here is gonna favor formation of the carbon oxygenable bond at least initially uh, but as you recall with ketones, there's always keto enol tautomerization, and most of the cases you've studied, the keto form is heavily favored. Well, that's not going to be the case here. So it turns out if we tautomerize this, so notice we're going to form a double bond here and make this just an alcohol. So, and this would be essentially the enol version. Well, there's something special about this enol version, and this enol version is aromatic. You've got a benzene ring right here. So, and that makes it really stable. And so as a result, for clays and rearrangements, starting with a phenyl allyl ether, they go a step further. You're not just going to start or stop, I should say, at having a carbon oxygen double bond. You'll take it one step further and the enol form will be aromatic. And that's definitely what you want to predict as your product. So again, just a special case when you have an allyl phenyl ether for the clays and rearrangement.